you are running for school board and you have another partner that's also running. Um, if you all get on, you know, first of all, how good are the chances of, of you getting on? That's the first question. And are people paying close attention to the school board races? And three, once you get on, what will be the strategy to start correcting some of these wrongs? Well, first of all, uh, we think we have a very good chance of winning. Uh, historically, the districts, the counties in our districts, are a little bit down in terms of percentage points of the number of, of uh, people who vote Democratic. But with the controversy that this board has has um, uh, stirred up, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the controversy that this board has stirred up, a lot of uh, independents and um, Republicans who value science and education are really turning against the board. So we think we have a very good chance and more and more people are paying attention. They're hearing from their uh, friends and relatives from all around the United States and even all around the world, just asking them, what is going on with your Board of Education? What, what is all the controversy? Why are these people doing this? And when they look at the specific little changes that this board makes, it's like death by a thousand cuts. And so I think we're getting a lot of attention. And what will we do when we get in on the board? We think that we will be able to rescind uh, most of the revisions that they made because there are a variety of problems with them. Uh, some of them are, are inaccurate. There is material that is plagiarized. Uh, one instance is from a UCLA website on the term uh, American exceptionalism. Uh, another is plagiarized um, uh, from Wikipedia. I mean, word for word, verbatim. Wow. And so, you know, this was brought to their attention at a, or they tried to bring it to their attention at a hearing of the Mexican-American uh, Legislative Caucus, and no board members attended. So they didn't get to hear the testimony, but... Michael Soto, who's running in District 3 down in San Antonio, uh, south of my district, um, brought up this, these two examples. And this he just found, you know, kind of uh, off the top of his head because he said it sounded a little odd to him. And who knows how many more cases may be in the curriculum that they have. It needs to be reviewed by scholars and experts, and they need to remove most of the changes and revisions. They made hundreds and hundreds of changes. Right. And so it's those need to be removed. You you are an educator yourself, but many of the people on the board aren't. How does that happen? I mean, should it, shouldn't there be a criteria, or is this a whole thing about, you know, the average person should have a say-so in the education curriculum because they may have a, an important perspective? It's um, it's part of the idea that somehow educators aren't average people, and, and that's not really true. I mean, you know, every, educators, uh, a lot of times they may be involved in business, they have children, and in fact our two children went to public school, unlike the children of several of the people on the board. So I do believe that there should be some qualifications. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, an advanced degree, uh, you know, it could be uh, experience at least a, a, a record of having participated in the public schools as volunteers or in some capacity, but we have some people on this board who, who have homeschooled their children or who, who sent their children to private school. And uh, so I think that there, there should be some, some qualifications, and certainly having some connection, professional or otherwise, with education uh, should be one of them. I don't think it has to be, you know, just only one set of qualifications, but certainly people uh, with some background, teaching or, or some other kind of background in education. Right, but definitely when you walk in there and you start saying the world is flat, we should be raising eyebrows and tell you to have a seat. <laughs> right. <laughs> At least. Well, look, we appreciate you coming on um, and sharing with us the updates. For people that are listening in different parts around the country, is there anything that they should be doing? Uh, I know in California we're doing some sort of legislation to make sure that those revisions don't come here. But we're a big state, but other places like Washington and Seattle and Oregon and, uh, you know, where we're also aired, they may not be as fortunate. Um, what would you be suggesting that our marching orders be? 
the main thing we have to do is stop these people dead in their tracks. We have to discourage them. We really have to beat them down because uh, if they think that they can do this in Texas, they will continue to do it everywhere, and this will be a template for the rest of the country. And one of the best ways to do that is uh, at the at the voting booth in November. And although people from around the country can't vote for us, they could certainly support us. They could go to VoteRebecca.com or uh, VoteJudyJennings.com uh, to make sure that we get a majority or at least uh, as, uh, that we have a stronger center on the board to uh, to roll back those terrible, disastrous revisions that the board made and to set an example and say, don't, don't try this. It's not going to work. We're not going to go back to the 17th century. And and for people out there, we definitely need to pay attention to the school board elections because, as you said, they quietly and not so quietly just infiltrated many of those small elections that we just forgot about. And the next thing you know, um, here we are. Um, I know there's a gubernatorial race, and Bill White, who's running, doesn't like it. What about Rick Perry, the current governor? Is he in support of these revisions? What he says is that he doesn't want to second-guess the State Board of Education. Uh, which is kind of ironic because the State Board of Education, those extremists on the board, are second-guessing the teachers who did the curriculum in the first place. All the teachers and scholars who put together a, a, a decent curriculum, they're second-guessing them, but somehow uh, Rick Perry can't bother with second-guessing or trying to rein in uh, this this state board that has outraged so many people. Wow. Something to think about. Rebecca Bell, Metaro, we thank you so much for coming on our show. And we will be in touch. Great. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.